guess who's coming to dinner? Grooming is back, and I'm not talking about Vidal Sassoon. Mass shootings at a drag show, and uh, you're going to see drag queens do something that you've probably never seen them do before, and it was on the Richard Bay Show uh, 25 years ago. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Richard Bay, and this is Richard Bay Talk with Albert Reynoso, my producer. How Hello, are you? Richard Bay. How are All you? All right. Have you ever been to a drag show? Yes, I have. All right. And yeah. did you get groomed? I see you didn't get groomed, obviously, because you have this big I long know. beard. Still, still sporting the Russian beard. Here. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're going to talk about that. But the big scandal. Can you do a good Donald Trump imitation? Um, not really. Not unless I'm on the phone. Because uh, I have friends who can do it. And I don't know what the secret is, because uh, the big story today is that Donald Trump had dinner with Kanye West and another guy who was an anti-Semite Holocaust desire named Nick Fuentes mm -hmm. that I guess most people haven't heard about, but it's on, it's on the news everywhere. And Donald Trump says, I didn't know who this guy was. You expect Donald Trump will say, I only invited one anti-Semite to dinner. How did I know there would be two? <laughs> um, he says he didn't know the guy, uh, you know, uh, this Nick Fuentes is, spoke at the January 6th rally. Um, he was also at Charlottesville. I guess he was one of the uh, good people, you know, that Trump talked about at the Charlottesville Unite the Right rally that left one woman dead. Um, now, Trump says he didn't know him. But remember, Trump, he didn't know Putin or then he did know, no, he did know Putin and then he didn't know him. And then it turned out they were both on the same TV show together. And he didn't know David Duke either. David Duke, uh, the head of the Ku Klux Klan, had endorsed Trump. Trump didn't know. I don't know that Proud Boys. I mean, what what is he going to say next? That uh, this, this, this anti-Semite, he only got one scoop of ice cream and I got two. I put them at the table for the one scoopers. Isn't that good enough? Um, or maybe he could say, he was only the coffee boy. Remember, remember when he tried that one? Oh, After pick, no, no. But in one instance, there was a guy who was involved with Mueller and they had pictures of him sitting at the conference table advising oh. Um, um, Donald Trump and Donald Trump said, oh, he was only the coffee boy. That's how he excused all of that. So why don't you just say Nick Fuentes was the coffee boy? So, you know, a lot of you don't know this character, Nick, Nick Fuentes. And um, he was at that Charlottesville rally. You know, I, I had a guy who was a former program director and a very intelligent guy try to insist to me that these marchers were saying, you will not replace us instead of Jews will not replace us, that it wasn't anti-Semitic. Now, this character that had dinner with Trump, and let's, let's leave out the whole idea. How does a guy just get in? I mean, one of the viewers of my podcast is a Trump supporter, and every week he challenges me and uh, uh, and and I, I really do like him, even though I, I think he's nuts. <laughs> and he said, oh, these documents that were at Mar-a-Lago, they were better protected than they would have been, uh, you know, with the archives. Well, how does this, first of all, Kanye West showed up unannounced and he just comes in and has dinner. And then he brings three other people with them. One of them is this anti, the Secret Service that is there to protect Trump, the security at Mar-a-Lago doesn't say, who the hell is this guy coming in? I mean, maybe he's uh, Al-Qaeda. Who knows? <laughs> no, just come that in. But you got to sit at the one scoop table, not the two scoop table. Anyway, here is Trump's dinner guest describing his Holocaust denial in some of the most loathsome terms. He compares the incineration, the massacre, the extermination of six million Jewish men, women, and children with baking six million cookies. Take a look at this. Or to cook a batch of cookies, 
and you have 15 ovens, pr probably in four different kitchens, right? Doing 24 hours a day, every day for five years, how long would it take you to make six million? Hmm, I don't know. It certainly wouldn't be five years, right? Uh, the math doesn't seem to add up there. The math doesn't quite seem to add up there. I don't think you'd result uh, in six million, maybe 200 to 300,000 cookies. And I think the Red Cookie Association said something like that, probably 200 to 300,000 cookies baked, probably. And in addition, you know, in this hypothetical, I imagine that if you took aerial photographs over the kitchens, you would need to see certain smokestacks to release the smoke from baking the cookies. And the smokestacks would project certain shadows but I guess they're not visible in the aerial photographs taken over the kitchens. Moreover, if you look at the soil texture, it's really not deep enough for mass cookie storage underground. Um, and so there's a lot of things, you know. All right. Does that give you some idea of who this guy is? Um, he's also appeared with and been supported by several Republican representatives in the House. Paul Gosar, Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene, of course. Well, Trump appointed David Friedman, who was a Jew, as his ambassador to uh, Israel. And David Friedman then tweeted right after this, to my dear friend, Donald, you are better than this. Uh, Mr. Friedman, no, he isn't better than this. All right, now as it pertains to politics, um, this is what um, Nick Fuentes proposes for those who are supporters of Donald Trump. He thinks that, you know, they've stopped Donald Trump. Trump didn't go too far. This is uh, Nick Fuentes' political uh, proposal. Take a look at this. And I hate to burst anybody's bubble, but there is simply no evidence that there is a silent majority. There is no evidence of this. Uh, there are too many non-white people in the country, frankly, for that to be the case. The country's 40% non-white and like 80% of them are liberal. You do the math on that. It, there's not enough of us, okay? Now, that's not a total black pill because this isn't a democracy and we don't want it to be. But the point is, when you look at these things like uh, abortion... It's popular. People like abortion. Hate it, but it's true. And you can thank the Jewish media for that. Abortion's popular. Sodomy's popular. You know, being gay is popular. Being a feminist is popular. Sex out of wedlock is popular. Contraceptives are, it's all popular. That's all, that's not to say it's good. That's not to say I like that. Popular means the people support it, which they do. And, uh, and it sucks, and it is what it is, but that's why we need uh, dictatorship. <laughs> that's unironically why we need to get rid of all that. We need to take control of the media or take control of the government and force the people to believe what we believe or force them to play by our rules and reshape the society. Well, after their dinner, dinner, Kanye West tweeted out that Donald Trump was very impressed with Nick Fuentes. <laughs> He makes quite an impression, doesn't he? All right. Now, one of the things, though, I don't understand why this guy is any worse than Stephen Miller, who wrote speeches for Donald Trump. And one of the saddest things was um, watching uh, Stephen Miller try to deconstruct the Statue of Liberty and its meaning. You, you probably all remember that. And Steve Bannon? Steve Bannon was in the White House for almost a year. Are those guys... Any better than this guy? I know Steve Miller is a Jew. <laughs> it doesn't mean he can't be a racist. All right. So this week as well, there was that shooting at the uh, drag show in Colorado. Um, and, you know, I, I in my feeling with, or at least from my perspective, with all this talk now about grooming and about drag queens grooming children, what are they grooming children for? To grow up and be more drag queens? I, 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 I don't get it. You know, at one point in the English theater, men were dressed up as women. 
playing all the female parts. It was uh, against the law for a man to be on the stage. Can these kids now not go see Mrs. Doubtfire on television or in the movie theaters? And, and this whole idea of grooming, I don't really understand what it is. Now, after a mass shooting, typically we talk about two things, thoughts and prayers and gun control. Of course, gun control goes nowhere. But the right wing reaction to some of this went beyond thoughts and prayers. Now, Jenna Ellis, you probably remember her. She was one of Trump's lawyers insisting that the election of um, 2020 was stolen. She says, we're missing the real tragedy of what happened at Club Q in Colorado. Take a look at this. Even more tragic than untimely yes. death is that the five people who were killed in the nightclub that night, there is no evidence at all that they were Christians. And so assuming right. that they were not, that they had not accepted the truth of the gospel of Christ and affirmed Jesus Christ as the Lord of their life, they are now reaping the consequences of having eternal damnation and that is far far greater and we should be having that conversation oh we should be having that conversation the fact that they they weren't christians and now they're they're burning up like bacon somewhere in hell that's the real tragedy here but why would this happen why would this happen after across the right wing media we're seeing all this animosity towards gays and drag queens and the idea that they're after your children. Um, Ron DeSantis, his press secretary, said anybody who poses our don't say gay bill or our actions against uh, the Disney Corporation and Disneyland, they're probably groomers themselves. They want to groom these children. Groom them. What the hell are you talking about? If, you rem if you've been watching this a long time, you remember this. This grooming thing started about a year ago and then it died out. And of course, I guess grooming is a step better than Hillary Clinton, who in the basement of Comet Pizza was torturing children and eating them as a cannibal. So, hmm, gee, what could have caused this? Here's Tucker Carlson and his guest with an answer. You know, saying that groomer is an anti-LGBTQ slur, that is doing irreparable damage to us uh, as a whole and is putting a really large target on our backs. And unfortunately, you know, the tragedy that happened in Colorado Springs the other night, uh, you know, it was expected and predictable. Um, we all within Gays Against Groomers saw this coming from a mile away. Yeah. And sadly, I don't think it's gonna stop until we uh, end this evil agenda that is attacking children. Oh, the evil gay agenda is responsible for killing drag queens and gay people. And listen, you, you all know the story of the uh, U.S. Army vet who sprang into action and dragged down the shooter, possibly saving scores of lives uh, because the guy had a military assault style rifle that was shooting down people. He killed five. But he was there with his wife and his daughter and her, his daughter's boyfriend, who was one of the victims. And after all this, he was attacked relentlessly on social media saying, why would a guy bring his wife and his daughter to see these evil drag queens? It's the evil gay agenda. You know, this is just recycling. When I was on WABC radio, my right-wing co-host would constantly talk about the gay agenda. It's the gay agenda. You know, he had a high-pitched voice like that, and he would get hysterical. It's NAMBLA. NAMBLA. Remember NAMBLA? Whatever happened to NAMBLA? The National Association for Man-Boy Love, or it's something like that anyway. They're after our children, these gays. The North American Man-Boy Love Association. Uh, well, oh, oh you. Right, man. Oh, I spent a were, lot of time promoting. Were you a member? <laughs> I can't say. Your never see your handshake. 
Oh, Jesus, man. It's just recycling the old uh, fear mongering about gays. Now, the, the gays are, are, are grooming our children. Uh, Lauren Bobert, I, right? I got her name right this time, didn't I? <laughs> I didn't call her yes, L- Lorena Bobert. Right. Uh, she tweeted out. I'm sending a message to all the drag queens out there. Stay away from our children in Colorado's third district. The the drag queens are after the children. Oh my God. Um all right. Well, uh, and then you're surprised when there's violence against drag queens. Now, when it comes to grooming. Why weren't these people upset about child beauty pageants? Take a look at this picture. Or this picture. You know, they put false eyelashes on them. They have hair extensions. Can we have the next pic, please? There you go. False teeth, spray tans. Are we grooming these children to grow up to be strippers? I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. No, I'm just joking. Um, But you know why they're not upset about that kind of grooming? Because it's so popular in the red states. It's so popular with good Christians. It's so popular with Honey Boo Boo's mother. Now there's some grooming going on, but it ain't the drag queens grooming them. Now, let me just tell you a very brief story. At one point, I had discussed Alan Combs on on the radio, and I'd said, this is a really a wrestling match. When, when they had Hannity and Combs, it was Sean Hannity and Alan Combs, the right versus the left. But Hannity always won. Hannity was the all-American Newt Rockney, go out there, push the evil liberal. And Alan Combs was this bespeckled, kind of Jewish intellectual, uh, and he would always have to lose. So Alan called me one day and said, Richard, I heard you were talking about me. I said, yeah. He says, well, I said, Alan, I I love you. I think you're extremely talented. I used to listen to him when he was funny on WNBC. I used to have him on my show. He says, well, what do you think I should do? And I said, Alan, if they're going to paint you as the devil, be the devil. Even the devil has fans. I said, we're a black turtle nest. We're dark shades. Smoke a cigarette on the air. Be Richard Belser, you know? Uh, And then go off and kick Hannity's ass. (laughs) Of course, he didn't do that. But I said, you know, if they want to pin you that way, embrace it. Go with it all the way. Give them somebody to really hate. And I'll tell you this, you'll get a lot of fans that way. Well, now uh, somebody figured that out in the wrestling ring. There is a wrestler called the liberal progressive who gets his ass kicked in the um, in the ring by a Trump-loving um, a goon. Take a look at this clip. <laughs> Real estate agent Dan Harnsberger has moonlighted as wrestling villain the progressive liberal Daniel Richards since late 2015. Get up, Kyle Fox News, maggot! Mostly in small towns in western Kentucky and east Tennessee. Which raises an obvious question. Why would someone put himself forward as a symbol of liberal values, knowing his job is to get his ass kicked every night? Guys who care about winning and losing over entertaining a crowd don't belong in this business. I am a Trump supporter only because I am the middle class. Who better to hate than the liberal? And you just want to jump up and smack him. way I rub the audience the wrong way. It's like, if you're a liberal, it's almost like a synonym for gay. I have a great body! I have a great liberal body! I don't care 
Um, and so therefore, I also don't care if they think I'm gay. And actually, because they think it anyways, I just egg it on a little bit. It's like flamboyance, you know? And so I like pressing that button. Talk about grooming. You see those little kids at the end there? So they're watching a liberal, you know, pl at least playing a gay, get his ass kicked. You know, being thrown to the mat, being jumped on, being beaten, being smashed in the face. You saw that, well, I use the term, quote unquote, young lady saying, I just want to go up there and slap him. That's grooming, folks. That's grooming these young kids to have a violent reaction when they see a gay or a liberal. Why aren't people concerned about that? And of course, there was Trump himself who went in there and uh, showed him what he would do to the enemies of the people like CNN. Take a look at this. Oh, what a tough guy. What a tough guy. All right. At one point, I was hosting um, a radio broadcast from something they call Broadway on Broadway, where all the Broadway shows and stars come out onto Broadway and they perform and they walk around and they sign autographs. They meet people. And I was really surprised and flattered that Harvey Firestein came through the crowd. Now, Harvey Firestein, in case you don't know, is, is one of the first drag performers to actually um, you know, break through in our culture and perform the uh, Torch Song trilogy. And Harvey Firestein came up to me and said, Oh, Richard Bay, I have to see you. You were the first person to put drag queens on television. And we're so... Um, we were so excited by that. And we, we owe you so much that we, that you were the one who did it. And I gave him a hug and he gave me a hug. And yes, on the Richard Bay show, we had drag queen dating shows. We had drag queens as our Vanna Whites giving away prog um, uh, prizes. We had, um, you know, drag, I, maybe it, this was the, um, the precedent for RuPaul. We had RuPaul on our show once, actually, before he was famous RuPaul. But here's something. Can you imagine if my show was on today? Oh, my God. Do you know, over and over again, I hear people come up to me and say, oh, Richard Bay, I used to cut junior high school, uh, you know, to watch your show. Oh, Richard Bay, I saw you when I was a kid. Could you imagine the controversy if the Richard Bay show was on today? Talk about grooming. How many of these kids who watched my show grew up to become the next generation of drag queens? Who can know? But something that was part of this evil agenda this evil gay agenda was we even had drag queens playing in a basketball tournament. Take a look at this. You know what? Whether you're a city drag queen or a country drag queen, you've had a lot of experience. You've had a lot of experience. Whether you're a city drag queen or a country drag queen, you've had a lot of experience checking out baskets. So we're going to have them on the floor right now, checking out the baskets that we have on our basketball court. City queens, uh, this is your uh, basket over here, right? So I'm going to have you over on this side of the uh, uh, this side of the basketball court. Okay, line up over here, country drag queens on the other side, please. Ladies, you're on the court. Now, the object of this game is this. You have got to score three baskets for your team on the opposite court. Okay, you guys ready to jump for the ball? Ready, set, go. All right. Whoa. There they go. City drag queens, city drag queens. Country drag queens got the ball. Taking it down, taking it down center court. Country drag queen passing. Country drag queen, oh, church lady. Church lady loses in an intercept. 
but country drag queen still in possession. Keep that ball dribbling. Keep that ball dribbling, guys. Oh, no, country drag queen. And it's a get up. Whoa. It looks like country drag queens won. City drag queen zero. But that ball is still moving. It, the ball is down off on side court. Oh, a rim shot that doesn't quite make it in. Country drag queen. Oh, church lady takes a long shot all the way down the court. A big pass, but a block. A oh, oh, right on the rim. Look at them slamming up. Looks like a bit of interception here. Country drag queen. Country drag queen taking it down court. Down court, and it looks like, yes, oh, so close. Whoa, a pass down to City Dragon. And the crowd roars. The crowd roars. We have an injury on the court. City Drag Queens. City Drag Queens 2. Country 1, but Country's got the ball. Oh my God, look at this. I've never seen action like this before. Oh, Charles Barkley, Michael Jordan have nothing on our Drag Queens. All right. All right, hold on. All right. Oh, no, no elbows here. No pulling off of wigs. City drag queen, big, oh, oh, <coughs> a heartbreaker, a heartbreaker right on the rim. If City gets it in, this could be the game. City, oh, oh, <laughs> right into the audience. A little knee shot there. Country drag queens, oh, come on guys. All right, our audience getting into play here. All right, City, City. God, I haven't seen anything this entertaining since the Harlem Globetrotters. City has it again, and it is in! Ladies and gentlemen, City Drag Queens, three to one! Ah, oh, Richard, you were the first one to have uh, drag queen basketball on national television. Harvey Feinstein. Harvey, that one's for you. Anyway, it's probably the first and last time you'll see drag queen basketball. And for all of those children who grew up watching that, who became drag queen basketball stars, uh, well... <laughs> I hope you're enjoying yourselves. I hope you enjoyed yourself. And thank you for joining me here again today. And remember, if you enjoy these podcasts, tell your friends about it, subscribe, and pass it all uh, along on Facebook. Uh, and as always, all my best to you. <laughs>